Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jupita, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all here this afternoon. I would like to thank you for joining us today for this special event on your technology future in Indonesia. Now, before we start the session, let's start off with an introduction from our supported event, which is uh, Thrive Agency and Office Plus. So the first support is from Thrive Agency. Thrive Agency is a digital enabler company with 15 years of experience. Our vision is to provide affordable digital transformation service for businesses with a wide range of selection and solution for you to reach out to the digital world. For the detail, let's we see this video. support. Please welcome Miss Yulia from Office Plus for introduction. Hello, I'm Yulia from Office Plus. Would you like to introduce the service available on Office Plus? For full details, uh, the video below. Cari tempat kerja untuk bisnis baru kamu. Tenang aja, sekarang ada Office Plus yang siap untuk memenuhi kebutuhan kamu. Di Office Plus ada berbagai fasilitas yang siap untuk mendukung bisnis baru kamu. Di Office Plus ada banyak fasilitas yang sesuai dengan kebutuhan kamu, seperti co-working space, private office, virtual office, workstation, meeting room, dan masih banyak lagi. Yuk cek di www.sewa-kantor.com sekarang juga. Oke, okay, thank you, Ms. Julia, for the introduction. Now, before we start, If, we have, uh, if you have any question during the presentation, please type them into the chat box in your Zoom control panel. And I'll bring them up after the presentation is done, and we will also have time for questions at the end of presentation. Okay, now we are ready to begin the session on biotechnology future in Indonesia. First of all, let me introduce Mr. Muhammad Malana Azimatun Nur as a co founder of PT Spira Life Biotechnology Indonesia. Please welcome Mr. Malana for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Can I share screen my presentation right now? Yes, can. Okay, uh, so we we'll begin. Yes, thank you for, for the time. Uh, this is me, Mahat uh, Mohlan Nisimatunur. I am a co-founder of Spiral Georetic Indonesia. In here, I will be presenting about the uh, biotechnology sector uh, with special focus on Mike Kwanji. And uh, later on, my CEO, Mr. Amak Yaakub, will be following the presentation about the startup or the economic value. Okay, uh, in here, why biotechnology is uh, attractive uh, recently and will be more attractive in recent years? Because uh, 
if we see uh, from recent century, actually this one, as you can see in the picture, is from Egypt uh, era around 2400 BC. This is about the bread and bean manufacturing process, and it's very old. And they they were uh, using uh, yeast to produce bread and bean manufacturing. It's very old, and it's very old technology, and and it's already uh, known by human being. So it's uh, for the biotechnology itself is very sustainable, and it is very environmental friendly compared to chemical products. And, and also it's very effective, uh, uh, very effective. Uh, for example, for pharmacy, pharmacy products, if you compare the products to the chemical products, uh, so, so the products from biotechnology is more effective. Uh, let's say if we take uh, astaxanthin from hematologus itself, it's uh, very effective compared to astaxanthin pro uh, produced from chemical process and also uh, is it has wide range of the products very very uh, large products and also last it has uh, more safe for health for example if we use products uh, for cosmetic compared to chemical compound it is healthier and if you see the left side of this presentation, you can see that the uh, start point of the technology development were from 6,000 uh, BC is growing products and move to 1940s is about industrial production of antibiotics, especially for uh, uh, for uh, World War uh, era. They use uh, like a penicillin uh, to produce in a large scale production and move until now uh, is, is uh, still moving and is still enlarging and is very attractive. Uh, so, why uh, we choose uh, uh, microalgae compared to other microorganisms? There are bacteria, fungi, yeast, uh, plant cell, animal cells, as you can see. Uh, in here, and uh, they were uh, only can be they only can be used and only can be seen under microscope. Uh, so why use microalgae? Because uh, it is easily cultivated in an aquatic medium, and also uh, it eat less water than the shell crops. And also, they can be cultivated in seawater or maybe brackish water, even in wastewater, they can be cultivated in everywhere in, in, the, in the aquatic medium. And also, it can be cultivated on a non Arab land, for example, in Saudi Arabia, in Israel, they can uh, use uh, like a desert land to cultivate microalgae. Or even in Indonesia, if, if you have uh, like a non productive land, you can also use that to produce microalgae. And also microalgae uh, have a high growth rate because you can harvest it normally in seven until seven uh, until 10 days, uh, uh, more or less. And then uh, they can be harvested continuously. For, for example, every day you can harvest it. And also they can put, uh, uh, they can they require around uh, 1.8 co2 1.8 kilogram co2 to produce one kilogram of the biomass uh, and the next one is the sustainability of of the production because it is more suitable if we produce it in a tropical country compared to for example a subtropical country or even in europe because they have four seasons in indonesia we only have two seasons like dry and wet, and and in um, if every year the sun is rising very nice, and also last one it has a uh, very wide of the products, and I will uh, I will show you some of them for the products uh, later on. But uh, about about microalgae, so microalgae is uh, like a single cell of uh, like microorganism. 
as you can see in the left side of, of the slide, uh, under microscope around 30 micron and the 100 micron. It is, and it is very wide range around uh, almost uh, 1 million of, of the strains existing right now. And over uh, 1,500, sorry, 50,000 species are described and over 15, thousand novel compounds are determined until recently. So it's very very wide range of the products. So um, for my project mainly it uh, utilizes sunlight and also inorganic carbons and nutrients to product uh, to produce biomass using uh, photosynthetic reaction and the size can be range from a few micrometers up to hundred micrometers and unlike higher plants, microalgae do not have fruit, stem and also or also leaves. And microalgae contribute more oxygen on air compared to high land. And it is very good if we want to mitigate CO2 and lower uh, like uh, greenhouse gas emission. And their famous consists of carbohydrate, lipid, protein, pigments, and other substances. As you can see in here, uh, carbohydrate uh, is around 30%, protein also 30% as well. And also lipids, it, it will probably uh, from 10% up to 20%. And each of the compound can be used and can, or can be utilized for several products. For example, carbohydrate, it can be used for bioethanol, bioethanol, bioplastics, and etc. For protein, it can be used as animal feed, uh, human consumption, single cell protein, and for pharmaceutical use, cosmetic, etc. And for lipids, it's very promising for uh, like. Uh, uh, renewable energy and also for the pigment itself is very useful for uh, example in pharmaceutical in cosmetics in like uh, skincare etc so uh, in similar way microalgae utilize sunlight water inorganic carbon for example for instance co2 and also micronutrients uh, macronutrients nitrogen phosphor potassium so it can produce carbohydrate with the end and lipids uh, inside of the cells. So uh, there are some applications for microalgae products, for example, for food, uh, pharmaceutical industry, cosmetics, fuel, even in carbon capture, they can also be used to capture CO2. Let's first uh, start with food. So because uh, some kind of microalgae, for example, spirulina, it consists of high protein up to 70% uh, of protein. So very promising to use as a source of protein. And also it's very delicious because uh, for several microalgae, it has a uh, rich of uh, iron, uh, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and etc. And also vitamins is very nutritious and also PUFA or this fatty acid is, is also uh, very promising because uh, the fatty acid from uh, microalgae is safe safe to be consumed for uh, pregnant women because uh, if we compare to fish for, uh, fish oil, they need to be harvested from ocean and it has a higher uh, metal compound. And also for dyes, uh, for ice cream example, or for candy, beer fridge. So you can use dyes for uh, for the derivative products. And also for food additives, for proteotics, beer fridge, it's in everywhere. Because uh, microalgae consists of uh, a lot of pigments. For example, if we choose uh, spirulina as a case, so in here you can see in the, on the website, spirulina to fight malnutrition in, in in kids. It is in India, so it is it is already it was done in there, and and uh, I think it's very successful in there because uh, the the malnutritionists are stunting kids it could be treated as well to uh, after they consume spirulina. So in here uh, you can see. From the right side of the picture, before and after, after they they consume spirulina, the weight uh, has been increased. 
So it, it is promising to compass study. And also for dice, uh, because uh, my crown tree consists of several dice, for example, blue pigment from Squilna and also green pigment from Korla, uh, for instance, and also, uh, for example, red pigments and uh, pink pigments from Pinella. So, so it is uh, very rich in uh, natural gas and so, so it is more safe compared to uh, chemical compounds from dyes, and it's very promising in the future. And also for a functional food, if, if you see the uh, left side of this slide, this one, so, so it, it is consists of uh, micro energy, so the micro energy is further uh, processed as uh, artificial meal. So it, it has a higher uh, plant-based protein. And, and if you can see Lawrence Spirina cookies, it also cookies uh, can be enriched with Spirina because Spirina it has higher of protein and also antioxidant, and also micronutrient, and etc. And this one, yeah, uh, this is actually our uh, recent developing products. So this is spirulina latte. So so uh, it's very delicious because uh, spirulina can be added into a uh, coffee latte. And also this one it is very uh, popular in Japan. So spirulina is kind of micro uh, It can be used as additional functional food in a cookie. And also they they uh, give it to uh, children in Bangladesh to, to combat malnutrition as well. And also this one, it is from uh, Netherlands. So they uh, enrich the chocolate with uh, spirulina. And the last one, this one, uh, the lower one, it is from India. They enrich the noodles with also spirulina because it's very healthy for our uh, health for our body. Uh, as you can see uh, from the nutrition facts, uh, this is spirulina. Uh, so it, it is around uh, 60 until 70% of, uh, sorry, 70% uh, of protein. This one and also it consists of beta carotene, vitamins, zinc, uh, even calcium. They contain a lot of calcium and also picosanin is it is the, the, the most available uh, compounds from spirulina because uh, this one can be used as antioxidant. Uh, this one, uh, this one, uh, the cookie, uh, it can uh, be enriched with spirulina as well. And let's move to pharmaceutical. Uh, if you can see in the labs, Side. This one it is Pucosantin. Uh, Pucosantin products from uh, Diatom from Micro. It can uh, combat like uh, diabetic person. So it's very important to to burn fat and also support weight loss and promote healthy metabolic rate. And it's very promising. And also uh, Pucosantin itself is very promising as anti-obesity, anti-cancer, anti-bacterial, anti-oxidant and inflammatory, uh, curing anemia, asthma, and some of micro, for example, Junalia, Junalia, it has rich of beta-carotene because beta-carotene is a derivative, derivative product of uh, vitamin A. So it's very promising there. Uh, like this one uh, for pharmaceutical application. So, Spirulina can also be used for bronchial asthma. And also for this one, it is from uh, like, uh, it's from Anjuno. So it can be used as a uh, therapy for a cancer. And also as an accident, uh, for example, astaxanthin itself, it is from Hematogus bovialis. Uh, it has uh, 6,000 times compared to vitamin C, this one. So if you take uh, just uh, one 
or maybe 10 micrograms of astaxanthin is equal to one gram or more of vitamin C. So it's, it's a very uh, promising and also it's very expensive out there because of the uh, promising of antioxidants in astaxanthin. It's also from microgram. If But if you compare this one with the uh, chemical compound from astaxanthin, it will be not more like this. And also it's from, I, I took this one from a journal, like a vitamin K and this one, you can also read it further or trying to make the vitamins for human health. And also for cosmetics. And so uh, microalgae can also be used as a compound for anti-aging, sun protection products, and also for whitening. Uh, this one is from France, it's still, it's still louder. So they use microalgae to uh, add um, in their uh, cosmetic product. And in Indonesia, if you heard before Mazaya, they use asasantin to enrich their products as well. And this one is from a journal that uh, microalgae is very promising for uh, cosmetic industry. Okay, let's move to renewable energy source like bioethanol, biodiesel, bio crude, even uh, aviation biofuel. In Japan right now, they are currently uh, researching about how to uh, produce aviation biofuel from banana, uh, from Uglena. It's kind of micro because it is rich of uh, uh, hydrocarbon. And also in Europe, uh, they use Botrygos uh, bauni because it has rich of uh, hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon, and can be converted to aviation biofuel. And for biopolymer, biopolymer as well, is very promising because uh, microalgae cell strains can produce polyhydroxybutyrate and it is uh, very sustainable. But this one, it has a lot of challenges because uh, the biopolymer or bio a polyhydroxybutyrate has very much low content compared to other plant-based source. But if we compare to uh, bacteria, for example, it is cheaper because microalgae only use uh, CO2 and also micronutrients compared to if we use bacteria, we need to add uh, substrate, for example, uh, glucose and glucose is uh, expensive so it is cheaper if we compare to uh, plain uh, bioplastic based from bacteria and for the future because this is under uh, investigation of course uh, it will not com compete with uh, food source for example corn cassava and etc that we can uh, find right now in the market so if if you see that the bioplastic right now, it is made from food source and it is not sustainable. And also for food source, uh, this one, uh, if you uh, experience, if you are experiencing about the animal source, for example, or fish, some of them use spirulina to enhance uh, protein compound. As you can see in, in the left side, this one, it has rich of omega-3 and also high carotenoid, uh, high PUFA and also pigmentation. And also even for uh, chicken, it can enhance uh, the uh, crowd metabolic and, and for the egg, it will enhance the DHA, EPA, and also in meat, it can enhance uh, DHA as well. And for uh, cow, uh, it will uh, increase the yield of the milk and more energy in milk and more uh, omega-3 fatty acid in milk and also enhance the and, and so on and so forth. And for pet uh, feed, uh, maybe you know that some uh, feed for cat, they also use piruna to uh, increase the flavor, increase the uh, odor, etc. 
So it is promising uh, even for feed source. Uh, but if we want to uh, make it more feasible, make it uh, more cheaper, we can also integrate the cultivation with waste water. For example, this one, uh, I took this one from my published paper in 2018. So uh, the uh, concept is using wastewater, for example, uh, palm oil and F1 to cultivate microbes. And, and for that, we can uh, use the biomass as uh, some products, for example, uh, biopolymer, biogas, even biodiesel, bioethanol, and fertilizer. And also, we can spread the available compounds, for example, PUFA, pigments, vitamin, protein, etc. We will have two benefits in here. First, we will have this kind of uh, products. And also for the wastewater, it can, uh, it will have uh, lower toxic compounds. For example, the biochemical oxygen demon, chemical oxygen demon will be lower. So it can be safer uh, to be, uh, to be come in the lake, for example. Yeah, you can you can find uh, the paper in here, and then also this one is the last paper from my research. And here we uh, I also use palm oil milk apple to produce glucosamine, and also lipid using uh, energy diatom and also clean oil chain. Even in CO two mitigation. Uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, 1.8 kilogram of CO2 can be used to produce one kilogram of the biomass microengine. So it can be used to uh, combat uh, climate change. As you can see in here, uh, this is uh, a startup in Mexico. They use microengine in a uh, popular place, like a uh, very high. Uh, CO2 pollution in here, they absorb CO2 from car, etc. And, and it is 10 up to 50, per, I think 50 times higher than terrestrial friends. And also this one, this is in Morocco. Uh, so this one is microgy. Uh, it is integrated with uh, Cement plant, this one. So this one, uh, it produces a lot of CO2, but the CO2 can be consumed by microbes and the biomass. This one, uh, it can be sold as a feed product. It is in Morocco. And for other pictures, I can show you this one is also from Morocco. This one, it is in Netherlands. So if uh, in winter season, the growth will be not much higher compared to summer season. And you can uh, produce microgen like this one, it is photobioreactor. And also, uh, several variation. This one is for uh, I will show you some examples from the existing industry, in microengine industry, like Xiangtai, uh, Algetai, etc. Like this one, it is Xiangtai, Hawaii, in USA. They use uh, open pond. This one compared to this one, it is more cheaper compared to uh, the close photo we have to pay a reactor like this one. It is in USA because uh, the rain season is not as much as uh, Indonesia, so it can be used like this in open area. Uh, they produce uh, astaxanthin and also spirulina. This one, uh, like this one, this red, this red pigment is astaxanthin. And also this, uh, Israel, they also produce uh, as something as well. So it is in this area, you cannot uh, uh, produce uh, like a higher 
plan like uh, Pick Jetapol and just tries very hard to be qualified in there, but they use this one to produce Atang Astasan because Michael Zik can be produced anywhere, even in non arid land, I mean, in non productive land. And also, this one is it is in Australia, they produce uh, beta carotene from Dunia Liala Salna. So, this one. Uh, in an open lagoon, open pond, and it is very rich of beta carotene. And also, so the Netherlands uh, they use this one as a uh, feed, uh, feed uh, product, and also for uh, fertilizer. So, so even fertilizer, they they sell it as well. So, and also for uh Japan uh, mostly they use uh, they cultivate chlorella because it rich it has rich uh, uh, chlorophyll and also Eugena also in Japan uh, they uh, they are focusing on healthcare beauty care biofuel and even in health check and can keep program it's like uh, to combat stunting, and it's very, very promising if we can uh, make uh, like uh, this program in Indonesia. And also for skill life, uh, currently we are focusing in healthcare, but uh, in the future we, we also we also uh, entering beauty care and other from the products for some of biofuel, biofuel, and so on. And interestingly, we are not only focusing on urina or maybe methods, but also we are currently developing other strains like diatom for glucosatin, cholera for protein and chlorophyll, and also lutein and dunella as well for beta carotene, and also for eugenia to uh, produce protein, DHA, EPA, red algae for esophosphoride, also, I'm to push for the ancient fuel. Uh, so we are currently developing these strains, and in Indonesia because uh, it is more uh, suitable in a tropical country. Uh, and also, we are currently developing two products. First, this one. So we are we are enriching our spirulina to combat anemia and uh, further for stunting. Uh, this one is uh, from America, as far as I know, and also this one is from Europe. They use a uh, spirulina and also enrich the spirulina with uh, iron to uh, combat anemia. As you can see in here, uh, if we take uh, 10 grams of spirulina, enrich spirulina, so uh, it will be 40% of the daily value. This one, this is zinc, 40%. And also for the vitamin B2, even for vitamin A, it has 70% uh, of the daily value if we consume 10%. Compared to the competitor, for example, this one, SP2, it is from America. They are... Uh, uh, they they are informing that uh, their product can be used to cure anemia because uh, nearly twenty percent of of your uh, their their island, but in our product uh, forty percent two times higher compared to the competitor. And and we are currently processing the patent for for this product. And secondly, uh, if we see. Uh, Reviews from, for example, Amazon. You can see that some of the customer are complaining about the smells, about the odors, because some of them are not like uh, they are. They are uh, complaining about the odor. Uh, you can see here they are giving very low star. So what what are we doing to uh, solve this one? So we are uh, lowering the smell uh, in a similar way because 
in uh, out there like this one it is uh, patent from china in this, this existing patent they also uh, uh, they also have a uh, patent to to remove this smell of the spirulina but in a more complex process but in in our process it has more simple uh, process uh, even we we have tried we have tried our product uh, to make a spirulina latte so the smell and also the other uh, this is very delicious and also for market size maybe uh, our ceo will explain furthermore about this yeah thank you very much that's that's what i can present to you yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Malana, for the speech and the insight. And now I would like to invite the next speaker, which is Mr. Ahmad M. Yaakub, as a co-founder and CEO at PT Spiralite Biotechnology Indonesia. Please welcome Mr. Ahmad for the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Juvita, for the time. And thank you very much also for uh, Mas Malana for a very interesting presentation, very thorough and I believe your presentation has opened uh, many, you know, eyes to understand more about uh, the potential of microalga. And uh, following up your presentation, I would like to discuss a little bit more about the bioentrepreneurship. And more specifically, I will take our company, uh, Spiral Life, as a case. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, let's move uh, into something uh, distract from uh, science a little bit, but still related with the science. Uh, but we will talk about the business side of uh, life science. Uh, we call it the bioentrepreneurship. Bio and my name is Ama, and I'm the CEO and also co-founder uh, of Spira Life. And yeah, so let's start with the definition. So the term of bioentrepreneurship is actually uh, often used interchangeably with other labels. Uh, for example, uh, bioscience entrepreneurship, life science entrepreneurship, or sometimes also called as bioscience enterprise. So, but whatever the descriptor, the fundamental notion uh, is about moving life science discovery uh, or invention uh, from the research, uh, from the research phrase uh, through development of commercial market. So one must understand that innovation is different from idea or invention. So if we say idea, uh, for example, we have our, when we take a bath, we have an idea. So that's idea. Innovation is moving forward than just an idea or invention. Invention is you start to realize your idea into something beneficial for society. But innovation is uh, you deliver your product or your offering uh, to the market. So yeah, when we talk about bioentrepreneurship, it's moving that research phase into business phase based on life science discoveries. And bioentrepreneurship can take in many forms in many industries. Uh, for example, uh, biofuel, uh, agriculture business, bioengineering, biorefinering, uh, renewable chemicals, and et cetera, et cetera. And because of these uh, complexities that to make sure the science and business move forward, uh, you know, in a, in a uh, how to say it, uh, together, to move together, uh, to gain benefit from life science uh, for a society. So the challenge for bio entrepreneurship is actually a little bit more challenging than the uh, typical business. So this is the difference, uh, the entrepreneurship and bioentrepreneurship. Yeah, because the uncertainty, uncertainty is uh, a little bit higher in bio business. So that's why the chance of success is also a little bit lower than typical entrepreneurship. So for instance, the bioentrepreneurship is significantly different from, uh, from IT-based startup. Uh, in terms of regulation, for example. 
in IT based startup, maybe you do not you do not need to worry much about the ethical committees when you're starting a startup, when you're starting a business. But for biotechnology, you need to get approval from ethical committees, for example, FDA in the USA or in Indonesia is BPOM, uh, BPOM in Indonesia. And also it takes more time and also capital or money to build a biotech business. So that's the hardly truth. Uh, and learning from our case, although Spirala was born in 2020, uh, our research and development have been involving since 2010. So Maslana's research is started like one decade ago. Uh, throughout this time, we can just release the company or we can just, uh, how to say, uh, to make Spira Life uh, come to being in 2020. It it's portrays how complex it is, how complex uh, to get the life science uh, uh, discoveries into business. And in terms of risk, the bioentrepreneurship must also mitigate uh, more risk than typical entrepreneurship. So other than dealing with market risks, execution risks, financial risks, and also team risks, the bioentrepreneurship will also dealing with uh, you know, scientific risk. Uh, we know that uh, doing science is very fun, but the possibility of succeed at the first attempt, it's not that much, or it's uh, a bit low. So that's uh, another, you know, that's adding another complexities in doing the bioentrepreneurship. And that's why, uh, like I mentioned previously, the chance of getting success in doing uh, bioentrepreneurship is uh, quite low. There is a research from Christensen in 2005, and also some other researcher. Uh, agree that only one in five new products idea are commercialized. So maybe we have idea, we have a good idea, we have good invention in our lab, but only one out of five invention or new business ideas are actually can move into the market or commercialized. And commercialized new product, the failure rate of a new new product uh, into the market, uh, the failure rate is up until 95%, or only 5% of new products is uh, succeed in the market. So the indicator of failure can be fail to deliver to market, fail to serve the product's mission, or fail to create any meaningful uh, financial return. That's the reality. So that's why when uh, doing uh, bioentrepreneurship or bio business, it is strongly suggested to uh, get connected with as wide as possible audience or stakeholders. So for example, in the case of Spira Life, we are very open for collaboration with any parties that has the same mission to bring uh, this business uh, come into being or to make Indonesia more than just a market for a microalga product. Because as uh, previously mentioned by uh, Pak Lana, by Mas Lana, that microalgae, well, this is a tiny product, uh, but the cultivation is very sustainable. It can produce a lot of uh, O2 and absorb CO2, and absorb CO2. Uh, to produce uh, protein and also biomass, and it can be further transformed into a useful product like biofertilizer, bioethanol, biopolymer, and etc. So that's why there is a lot of uh, you know the market size for this commodity for this product is always higher. Uh, Paalana already mentioned a little bit about the market size and also the trend. So this is the, the reality. Some uh, marketing companies, marketing research companies has been predicting uh, the market size for microalga based product uh, to increase with the average of uh, compound annual growth rate or uh, CAGR at 4.3% annually. So meaning that in 2027, the market potential for microalga product will be not less than 4.6 billion US dollar. 
or in bahasa Indonesia 4,6 miliar US dollar, not juta US dollar, but uh, miliar US dollar. It's really big market. It's very big, promising. Although the possibility of getting success in this industry is low, but the market potential uh, is very promising. And other other research uh, companies also predict uh, differently, but still in the same trend. So still predicting that the market of microalgae microalgae will be increasing uh, throughout the time. And North American countries is uh, among the territories that uh, use uh, mostly the products. So this means that the possibility for us, if we can. Uh, uh, produce uh, microalgae in Indonesia with a lower cost, thanks to the geographical conditions that very uh, promising for us to produce that kind of uh, product uh, in in a cheaper way. Uh, it is possible for us to uh, go into international market as uh, exporter. Okay, so that's that's the. Uh, uh, the slight uh, picture of uh, how promising this business uh, in the near future. And this is also another uh, market uh, market um, analysis, market opportunity analysis uh, presented by meticulous research. It shows that, yeah, the type of product, the market segment, sorry, the type of uh, microalgae product that uh, very popular uh, throughout sorry, uh, internationally, is, internationally is purina and chlorella, dunaliella, hematococcus, and other macroalgae. And based on the previous presentation from uh, Pak Lana, from Mas Lana, uh, all of this type of microalgae is actually possible to be cultivated uh, sustainably in Indonesia. Okay, so the drivers of the growth in microalgae market uh, it's uh, th there are some points. Uh, first is the you know more inclination towards health and wellness trend, and also people are getting more conscious in uh, you know choosing the products they consume. Uh, more specifically, in North America and also in the Europe, they tend to replace the more unnatural products derived from, for example, fuel. Uh, for example, uh, coloring agents from fuel, they tend to replace that with more natural products uh, from microalgae. Okay, and also growing vegetarianism. Vegetarianism. So it is also drive the uh, the market of microalgae. So no wonder there is a progressive investment of some countries in microalgal industry. Uh, this is uh, some picture that that also presented by Paklana. And this is the map of global microalgae uh, production. And yeah, sadly to say, in 2015, there is no single Indonesian companies are doing or are excellent in doing uh, a business in this uh, future commodity. So there is no Indonesian companies. While Australia, they have four companies, and the US, they have 11 companies. And North America, Canada, they have two companies, but there is no single companies in Indonesia. And if we see more recent data, the growing of companies that are focusing on this uh, community in Europe, it's getting higher and higher. So this means that the number that I presented previously related to the market potential is validated by the industry, right? So in France, now, 2021, there is not less than 25 companies are uh, doing business in this uh, commodity. In, in Germany, in Hungary, in Spain, and also in other companies like uh, in other countries like the UK. Right. So, uh, and what about Indonesia itself? What about Indonesia? The consumption of uh, microalgae in Indonesia is uh, dominated by spirulina. And yeah, uh, the market already accepted as a food supplement. 
and also as cosmetics and also for feed. And uh, sadly to say that uh, our existing consumption is dominated uh, by imported product from the US, Japan, and also China, and from India, with approximately volume uh, 25 until 27 tons per month. So this is very saddening because we know that we have the great potential. Uh, we have a potential to be excellent in this industry, but there is no strong uh, players in this industry yet in Indonesia. So that's why, uh, sorry. Uh, and what about the, uh, the significance of microalgae for, for, for Indonesia? If we can, um, you know, if we are able to uh, succeed in industrializing the microalgae in Indonesia, at least it can solve two very important problems. First is our dependence towards imported pharma raw materials. Uh, today, 95% consumer uh, pharmaceutical products in Indonesia are imported. And if we can, yeah, if we can um, uh, make the microalgae business or industry is getting bigger and bigger, maybe we can shift a little bit the imported pharma raw material uh, using internal sourcing. And also high rates of nutritional deficiencies or, and, and stunting. Uh, because as previously mentioned by Pak Lana, uh, one of the strong characteristic of microalgae, for example, spirulina, is the high protein content and also high zinc and also uh, FA or iron. And micronutrients are very important for against uh, stunting in Indonesia. So that's why we offer our solution. We do research and development. We cultivate some microalgae uh, species. We are doing post-harvesting and marketing and sales. And we do all, all these stuff based on existing research. Right? And this is our production facilities. Uh, now, uh, yeah, it's still small, but it's uh, it's uh, developing, and yeah, this is our business model. We are not only focusing on B two B, but we also uh, doing the B two C, and um, and we also uh, have the revenue revenue stream from licensing uh, our solution. This is our existing product, uh, spirulina powder and flakes. We also sell uh, tablets and also capsules. We also sell uh, spirulina, sorry, ficus and extract. We extract from spirulina. And in, in uh, this month, we will release our first B2C product, uh, the spirulina uh, supplement. So of course, it is uh, opening uh, new possibilities for everyone to have a partnership with us because it's new product. So we uh, welcome uh, entrepreneurs to sell or to market the products together. And this is the, like I previously mentioned, uh, that doing bio entrepreneurship business is a bit challenging because the regulation is very tight. And yeah, Alhamdulillah, thanks God, uh, we have secured our, uh, you know, Ijin Bepom, uh, Ijin Bepom. So, yeah, that's why we can release our products uh, in the near future, in this month, inshallah. And this is our milestones. We started humbly in March 2020. We started our business by receiving a grant from Energy and Sustainability, Sustainability Research Institute from the Groningen, the Netherlands. So we can say that the seed, the Spirala seed, Spirala life seed is actually came from the Netherlands because we are starting humbly with uh, their grant. And September 2020, we start, uh, you know, we acquire legal status. Now uh, our badan hukum is uh, PT, Perseroan Terbatas. And we did some collaborations. And yeah, and the journey continues. Uh, we are entering P2C. And in June 2022, we plan to uh, acquire Internet of Things uh, to enable us to produce more uh, microalgae by doing collaborations with wider 
uh, groups. So if you're interested to be part of uh, Spira Life Journey by being our one of our uh, partner in cultivation, so you just uh, drop an uh, email to us and we can talk about it uh, later on. And this is the collaboration trajectories other than uh, maybe you want to, you are interested to being uh, one of our reseller, uh, but we can also talk about uh, doing, you know, research together and doing uh, investment to scale up the business or uh, if you have access to wider market, please let us know. And we are currently uh, in a close conversation with the company in Japan to get our product to be marketed in there. So if you have another possibilities in other regions, uh, please let us know. And if you want to understand more about the business, uh, please visit our website, social media, and also uh, this is our existing networks. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And yeah, let's collaborate for uh, Indonesia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Mr. Amak for the speech and insight. Okay, uh, I hope all you guys enjoy this meeting insight. Uh, now we are opening the Q&A session. Maybe if there is any question, please open your mic, uh, introduce yourself and ask your question to the speaker. Okay, maybe Adi Susanto. Adi Susanto, you want to ask? Hello, selamat siang. Hello. Yes. Hello, selamat siang. Ya, siang, Pak. Selamat siang. Bisa dengar saya? Hello, bisa dengar saya? Clear, Pak. Yes, clear. Ya. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I have uh, two question. Two question. Uh, first for the first presenter. So the potential of micro algae already explained with interestingly by Dr. Ajam. So I just uh, want to ask uh, the question based on the real situation now. So we know that uh, palm oil, palm oil, it's very really difficult to find out uh, recently. So like like Zapier from the market in the since the last few months. So my question is, uh, is there any strain of microalgae that produce the large concentration of oil that is extracted, uh, produce the product similar or almost similar with palm oil? The, the, the strain of microalgae that produce the oil that is similar or almost similar with palm oil. Uh, the second question from the second, the second presenter, uh, there are many strains of micro in the market. So there are many strains of micro available in the market. So if you want to start to do business with micro what is the what, what is the most potential of strain to culture? So the terminology of potential is easy to culture and then uh, uh, high high value, high value. Uh, I, uh, I mean the uh, high price and then easy to harvest or, or something that uh, that we, we, we can uh, take the <coughs> decision that uh, the micro algae culture is very potential for business. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. May I answer the question? Yes, please, Yes, thank you uh, for the question. First, uh, as I uh, 
mentioned before that that uh, my project can be utilized and or can be cultivated in a palm oil milk effluent. Uh, there are some strains that uh, have uh, higher oil content, uh, more than thirty percent of the corella. The uh, properties uh, is almost similar to palm oil because the C seventeen the palm acid is dominating in there. But sorry to say that that the price of the downstream processing is much higher compared to where, when we are uh, producing palm oil itself because uh, the the uh, harvesting cost and also the drying cost, the extra extraction cost are still uh, high out there. So that's why it's not it's not uh, feasible if we uh, produce oil from uh, microalgae. That's that's the main obstacle as well. If we are talking about uh, biofuel from microalgae, it's still not uh, feasible because the the downstream processing are still have, is still high. Thank you. That's from my question. That's from my answer. Yeah. Uh, I believe that I also have a question, right, uh, from Pak Adi, but I'm sorry, I cannot clear enough to understand the uh, questions, Pak Adi. What I understand is what is the most uh, potential culture or cultivation or, or what, uh, Pak Adi? Can you clarify your questions, please? Maybe you can unmute your mic, Adi. Okay, okay. So, yeah. So, uh, the second question, uh, uh, what is the most potential micro RD? Uh, what is the most potential micro RD to culture if I want to do business? Okay. So, the most potential, I mean, that uh, easy to, easy to culture and right. then high price. Then uh, it is to have us or, or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now it's clear. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for the question, Fatih. Okay. Uh, yeah. The uh, one of the species that is very understand understood by the market. So if you talk about uh, potential, so meaning that uh, in my perception, which which uh, microalgae is uh, already, you know, understood by the market. If you talk about that, of course, uh, it is spirulina, uh, Padi. Spirulina is already widely used uh, and understood by the market, but everyone can do spirulina. Uh, so there's a lot of parties. There is a lot, a lot. Uh, some, some, some companies uh, that are has the capability to uh, produce spirulina. What makes us different? What makes uh, spiral life different is you want to go beyond, Padi. So we also doing the research to unlock the higher potential of spirulina. For example, Pak Lana already mentioned to uh, innovation that we are currently doing. First is we lessen the odor, lessen the smell of the spirulina uh, because uh, market wants it. And the second is uh, we fortify the spirulina to meet uh, to closely meet with daily requirement, daily consumption. So yeah, going back to your question, so which species of microalgae are more, uh, you know, easily to market or getting higher potential? The answer is uh, spirulina. However, there is also uh, a strong development uh, in 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 Western countries. Uh, other species, uh, for example, uh, so, uh, the development. What I'm talking here is the development of the market. So other species, for example, Astaxanthin from Hematococcus pluvialis. It is also uh, getting getting more uh, getting more uh, how to say it, momentum at this moment. Yeah, because uh, Astaxanthin is known as the strongest antioxidant agent at this moment. So its strength is 6,000 times than vitamin C. So in this pandemic era, there is a lot of people are looking for 
um, you know, to getting their their body uh, more prepared for the pandemics uh, by consuming uh, you know some things that can strengthen in their 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 immunity, and astaxanthin is one of them. So the market is getting uh, higher, and the other species or the other uh, microalgae species that are currently also getting more uh, market is uh, fucosantin, fucosantin from diatom. So it is also very important. Uh, Pak Lana, Mas Lana will explain a little bit more what is the what is the how do you say the value of fucosantin. And at this moment, as far as I knew, only one very strong companies are producing fucosantin. It is the one that in Israel, and they are exporting everywhere throughout the world. So that's also opening possibilities for us to uh, get into the business and yeah, try to rate the wave uh, of this uh, potential. Maybe Palana will add something about Fukusantin. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, I will uh, explain a little bit about Fukusantin. So this kind of uh, secondary pigment from Beatum is very promising for anti-diabetic agent. So it is very promising in a, a like a crowded town like Jakarta or maybe Surabaya because there are some people that have high capacity uh, potency. But currently, the production of fucosantin is coming from uh, seaweed. Uh, as we know, seaweed seaweed uh, it is very low growth rate. You need to wait until three months or maybe uh, four months depends uh, on the weather. But uh, if we use diatom, we can uh, uh, we can harvest around 10 days and also it contains higher fucosantin around 2% compared to a seaweed. Seaweed is only 0.2% and diatom it contains uh, around one up to 2%. So it's very promising out there. And in Indonesia, I, I uh, see that uh, the focus uh, will be booming because last uh, four years uh, when I start my PhD, there are uh, there were a lot of researcher doing uh, focus research in Europe, especially in Netherlands, uh, but in Russia they are still slow. And I believe that focus will be uh, known uh, further and further to combat uh, diabetes. Yeah, thank you, Pak Lana. And one, one more question I present with uh, Pak Lana presentation. In the first question, you mentioned that Hamatokopus uh, is very, very promising. So uh, the, concent the concent concentration of astaxanthin is uh, almost 6,000 times than vitamin C. So uh, is it possible to count the uh, Hamatokopus uh, not, in a, not in a big scale? But and household scale, uh, maybe uh, I I mean in uh, uh, home industry, like in home industry. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if we talk about home industry, um, there there are some obstacles because uh, we need to use some uh, equipments, and it, and as far as I know, is uh, investment cost is very much high. We cannot use just a simple uh, equipment, so. I think it's not, it's not possible to to cultivate hematopus in a small scale. There are one there there is only one big company in Indonesia. You can search uh, a company in Kendal, jo, uh, Central Java, and they, they, uh, the the asasantin is produced in a large scale. And we are now developing our asasantin itself in a prototype scale currently. Ya, ya, thank you. Matur suwun Pak Lana, Mbak saya kembalikan. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, thank you Pak Adi. Oke, okay, due to limited time, uh, we need to end our discussion session today. Uh, thank you Mr. Amak and Mr. Maulana for answering the question and for the great presentation. And it was a pleasure to have you guys uh, in here with us. So this is the conclusion session.
Thank you all for making time in your busy schedule to join us here this afternoon. And it's been our pleasure to host this event. And I wish you all a patient day. Thank you and see you at our next event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.